Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to episode three. In the last episode, we talked about what variables and functions are, what are the different types of them, and what they do. Uh, specifically, we talked about the integer, float, string, and Boolean values, as well as the ready and print functions, as well as our custom functions. So remember that the ready function is a function that is defined by us, but called by Godot. Whereas print is the opposite, is defined by Godot, called by us, and then we can define our own uh, custom function here. Um, for instance, like my function, just like this. Uh, and then this is defined by us and called by us. Now, we're gonna be learning about another really important function in Godot today called the physics process. So I'll take function, and, and then we'll start typing physics process, and it pops up right there, just hit enter. Enter again, uh, and I'll just put pass for now. So this is a really important function in Godot, and it is uh, what really allows you to create movement and things that happen over time, because this function is called constantly in Godot, and we'll go over exactly what that means in a second. But what I wanna show you guys real quick is something really, really important, and that is this. So if you go up here to the search help, you can also set it as a shortcut. If you go to editor, editor settings, shortcuts, you can set anything um, in the editor as a shortcut, which I do, command shift F for me. Um, and then you can search any function or any node in the game and see uh, just get a little bit about that. So this is actually the documentation of Godot. This is available online, but it's really nice because it's right here in the editor. So for instance, we can go ahead and look up our ready function and you can see this little thing void here and it also says virtual. So virtual, when I was saying like a, a, a type of function that is defined by us, but called by Godot, that's called a virtual function, right? Uh, and then void means that it returns nothing. We'll get over what that means in a second, but essentially like if you had a function that for instance calculated the distance between you and one of the enemies, your player and one of the enemies that you know he's trying to shoot at, um, it might return to you the distance, like 30.2, and thus because it's giving you the distance back, uh, this would say int, or I'm sorry, a float, because the 30.2 is a float, right? Uh, and that would be the return type of value, right? That's why we learn those things. All right, and it also has a little explanation of what ready does. Now, uh, I'm gonna hit Command F here, and I'm gonna search for the physics process. Uh, there we go, physics process right there. Uh, okay, so call during the physics process step of the main loop. Physics processing means that the frame is synced to the physics, i.e. the delta variable should be constant. It is only called the physics processing is enabled, which is done automatically, blah, 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 bunch of fancy words I'll get into better anyway. The other thing I wanna go ahead and open in the help here is the sprite. So remember that, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this and open this. So remember that this is a sprite node and we're calling this our main character node. Um, and so basically what that means is that it comes with a, a certain number of things. So remember I said the class or node of Sprite is like its main function is to display a texture, right? And, and because it has that function, it has some things built into it. And a bunch of functions that are defined by Godot that again, we can call and also a bunch of variables uh, defined by Godot that we can get access to about the, the texture. So here, if you search it in the help, you can see it says class Sprite, description, a node that displays a 2D texture. All right. Uh, a lot of these actually, especially the, the uh, more simpler things like a node, I mean, I'm sorry, like a, a sprite node, have uh, links to demos online, which is always really helpful, but usually they're a little complicated for people like you and I. Um, <laughs> then we also have these things called properties. So properties are basically variables that are stored about, um, yeah, they're basically interchangeable with variables, except they're specific to that class, right? So these are the sprite things. Texture, right? So we go here and go over to the right. This is called the inspector tab. And you can see here is this texture um, property right here and we filled it with the icon thing so then you can just go ahead and say uh, that means we can go and say whenever we're in a script that extends sprite right like we go here it says extend sprite we can say um, like basically texture print texture and it will know what that means if you're in you know a, a regular node or you know some other kind of node uh, it won't know what you're talking about because that's not a variable or property of that node same thing with methods it comes most of these classes come with their own methods and this is uh, no uh, uh, different in the sprite. Method, um, again, is just like how properties are just like uh, the same thing as variables, but specific to the class that they come with. Methods are functions that are specific to the class that they come with. So that being said, let's go ahead and hop in here. So physics process delta, again, is called by Godot, and it is called every physics frame. So you might know that most games run at either 30 or 60 frames per second, right? Um, and Godot runs at 60 frames per second by default. Uh, you can change this, but we're not gonna go into that right now. By default, it's going to run at 60 frames per second. Now, the physics process will be called each one of those frames. So, for instance, if we run x um, plus equals one, and then we'll say print x, 
Why is it not like that? There we go. Okay, now if I run this, you can see that it's just counting up very, very quickly. You can see how fast that's going, and that's because it's happening 60 times every second. Now, what we see right here inside the parentheses is called an argument or a parameter. In this case, uh, we get this number called delta. Now, and when you define your own functions, you can make your own arguments that people can provide for you. In this case, Godot is providing us with this argument delta, and it has a certain number. So we go ahead and print that. We can see what that is. Okay, I'll run that. And you see that it's this number, right? <laughs> 0.016667, uh, which is equal to, uh, and something you can do is write prints, comma, and then it'll print both things with a space in between them. Uh, I'm gonna put one divided by 60, um, so delta is equal to one divided by your frame rate. Let's make this a float here, remember? So that way we are returned a float. Uh, and we'll go ahead and run this. And you can see that they're now both printing uh, 0 0.016667 because delta is equal to one over frame rate, which of course in this case, because nothing bad is going on, is just one over 60. So that's really important because it allows you to sync your game to your frame rate. So for instance, if you have somebody moving uh, and let's say somebody's on a really old computer or uh, maybe they just have a bunch of apps open and they're streaming or something like that, uh, then your game won't notably lag as much. At least everything will lag um, together at the same time. So that way it's not going to put them at a severe disadvantage. Usually we're talking about the kind of lag that drops from like 60 to like 57 or 58 frames per second. And then, then you won't have any notable like blips across the screen. So that's really handy. And how we can use that uh, is to actually move our player and we can move him according to our frame rate. So now we're gonna get into that. And the reason I talked about the sprite node and these properties is because, um, now the sprite node of course is a node, right, that inherits from things. So what that means is that just like sprites, if we go up here and we go into our help and we search the node 2D, not 2S, but the node 2D here, uh, we can see that it itself has all these properties. Now, if we go back into the sprite, you'll see that up here it says inherits node 2D canvas IM node object. So all the way up, the in, in, it, basically everything the object has, node, canvas item, and node 2D has, Sprite also has because it inherits from them. It's basically like a child of those things. So uh, we can go right here and we can see that. So right here in the inspector, remember, uh, we have Sprite. We can see the parameters or, or properties, I'm sorry, for um, sprites, you can see the offset of the sprite, you know, if you want the image to be off, whatever, the animation, if you have sprite frames and you want animating, the region, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and then we see we have node2d, canvas item, and node because uh, it inherits, sprite inherits from node2d, which itself inherits from canvas item, uh, and so on. So node2d has some properties, again, that are really awesome, one of them being the transform property. And thus we can move our position, we can rotate our guy, we can scale him, as you can see right here. Um, and we can change those properties right here in the editor. Uh, I can change the position to be 100 and then he moves over there. But we want to do that from code. And like I said, when you have a property, you can access it from the editor quite easily. So we can say, for instance, print position. Okay, uh, and we'll go ahead and do that. And you'll see that's printing uh, 0, 0 because we are at position 0, 0. Now we can change that position, right? So let's say that I actually want my guy to move, right? Well, I can just move his position from code. Now you can do this in the ready function, right? But it would only happen once. So if you want something to move, you want it to move a little bit every frame. So when to do that is the physics process. So position, and we'll do plus equals one, run this, it's not gonna work. Now, why doesn't it work? Well, because you can see right here, parse error, invalid operand times vector two and int. Um, so specific to game dev, we have uh, a, another type of variable called a vector two. Now this is really important. If you're using uh, a 3D, it'll be a vector three. And these basically just have X and Y coordinates. So if you go over to position, you can see that there's an X value and a Y value, uh, the X value meaning along the X axis, of course, horizontally and Y up and down like this. And so a vector two is simply a variable, and we'll actually write this here. So we'll say var, um, we'll call this speed, right? Equals, and then just write vector two, see it fills it in for me, parentheses, and then you have an x and a y value. And you can see right there that it says x co or colon float and y colon float, meaning that both parts of this are actually, it's, it's a kind of complex value that is made up of two of the other values, right? So uh, hopefully not that, difficult to understand. We've got a, a X and Y value in the vector two, and they're both made up of floats. Um, and we'll go ahead and say that I want it to move mm, one in the X and one in the Y. Uh, let's do, let's do five. 
five in both. Now you might notice like, hey, you just put an ints in here. Um, what's nice thing about the vector two and almost every more complex data type like this in the game is that they have like a built-in uh, function when you when you write like so I say vector two five five it's running basically um, remember we have these functions here that would turn five into a float right so you don't have to write 5.0 because Godot is basically converting it to 5.0 for you which is nice so now we have that and we can say um, plus equals speed okay there you go and we'll go ahead and run that look at that moving across the screen uh, and of course, that is because his position is being uh, increased by that uh, every single physics frame. So that many times per second. Now, if we wanted to sync this to the physics, all, we'd, all we would have to do uh, is then multiply times delta. Okay? You see, obviously, it's going to move much, 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 much slower here. Uh, I'll go ahead and change these, multiply them by 10, and then we'll get a... Ah, slower speed. Kind of have to play around with it, see what speed you want, of course. But the nice thing about this, of course, is now that uh, if you run everything in your game, you have a bunch of moving ports and they're all synced to delta, then they'll all move at the correct pace relative to each other if there is lag uh, or there isn't, you know. Um, and of course, the other thing you can do is because as long as you're syncing to something times delta, you know, eventually, right, we can just do this times 10, right? Uh, and then this will go really fast right? Even faster than it was before. Um, because it doesn't matter as long as we're times delta. So this is something uh, a lot of people are like, oh, then, you know, I got to make my speed like 500 times 500. Uh, I just multiply delta times 10. It'll still sync to your frame rate. It just makes this uh, a bigger number. So that way it doesn't shrink that as much. And that's basically the basics of some, some really easy movement. Okay, one more thing I wanted to show you guys really quickly uh, is that whenever you have something of this vector two value or anything that is a, a complex data type with multiple values within it, you can actually just grab one of those values. If we go over here uh, to position, again, we can see that there's an X and a Y. So we can go ahead and grab, just like scale X and Y, we can grab just one of those by doing position uh, dot X, right? Now we're just grabbing those. And we can actually do the same thing for our own value. So we have speed here. And again, speed is now a vector too. So this won't work because we're trying to add a single uh, float number with a whole vector. Um, and we just want the x value of our speed to do speed.x. Uh, and then it will just grab the first value there because this is a vector two type. Uh, and now if we run this, you can see that he moves to the right across the screen, just like that. Uh, let's go ahead and multiply this times, uh, let's just do like five. So that we get a little, little, yeah, there we go. There's some decent movement. Okay. So what I'd like to quickly wrap up with is just giving you a little homework assignment. So right now, like I said, uh, we're doing things. If you're feeling a little overwhelmed at this point, please don't be. Uh, it's natural to feel that way with something obviously that's new to you, but please stick with it. And hopefully you can do this simple homework assignment. So like we just did, we just moved the position based upon what we uh, uh, encode, we just grab the position here. I just wrote the name of it. And you can see it's actually this slight um, uh, blue hue versus these variables, which are white. Now, what I would like you guys to do is rotate our object. Now, if you, this is actually very important. I forgot to mention it. If you hover your mouse over any of these properties, you can see that it then says property colon and then uh, underlined we have um, the, the actual name of the property that you need to call in code. So obviously right here, it says normal map, but uh, you know, in title case, and there's a space between normal and map. But in code, we don't say that. We do all lowercase with an underscore in between. That's pretty much um, standard for all properties, but in case you're ever confused, like you know, what is the name of this property, hover your mouse over that, and it'll tell you exactly what you need to, to type out in your code to get access to that property. Now, your homework assignment is to make this guy spin around every physics frame. So we, I want you to do that doing using the rotation degrees um, and the physics process function. Hopefully, given those hints, you should be able to figure that out. And you can even play around with messing with the scale. So yeah, with that, thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this helpful, please give me a like and a subscribe. Uh, I'd really appreciate it. Please leave any comments or questions you have down below, any feedback, anything you think I should go over more in detail. I would be happy to do so. So thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.